Good day. It's a joy to welcome you to this weekly broadcast of One Heart Church. I'm Gerald Spicer, pastor of One Heart. And every week we have the privilege of being able to share God's word uh, with those who are watching online. And my prayer is that today this message will speak straight to your heart because today we look at how important it is and we understand the difference between the temporal, the things that we deal with on earth, and the eternal, the things we anticipate from heaven. In fact, today we learn, we learn and understand how Paul understood that at, at, as he processed life, that life would end at some point but that from that, God would have something even more amazing in store for his life. And today we understand how to discover, how to have the courage to walk with God, the courage to walk in faith, the courage to believe beyond anything that Christ in us is working an amazing work. And he's given us the courage to face whatever it is that comes at us. Today, as you think about that, it may be you're facing something that's very challenging. And you get down the bottom line and you begin to ask yourself a simple question. How do you approach life? I mean, when you look at how you live out, do you live it by fear? Do you live it by faith? Do you live it by conviction or convenience? Do you live it by an approach to joy? Or are you just looking for happiness? Do you understand how loved you are by God? Do you recognize that he has something in store for you that no one else could give you? A peace that passes understanding that equips you to be courageous no matter what you're encountering? Today, as we find ourselves in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we continue this message and then series of messages on what it means to be faithful. And we've been looking at the book of first, or 2 Corinthians uh, throughout uh, this entire study. And today we look at chapter 5. And let's look, if we could, at a few verses just to set the tone for this journey that we're going on that allows us to come to a place where we experience a courageous approach to life and we walk in the courage that comes from God. First of all, verse 6, notice if you would. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. What does he do here? He balances the necessity of us understanding that there is something more that we can anticipate in the future than we ever dreamed about having here on earth. Today, we get a chance to live that out by looking at his word. We get to see what happens when you take seven steps towards courage, seven steps towards experiencing what God has in store for your life and for mine. And to me, when I read it, when I see this text, I, I want to get more and more courageous to experience what God has in store for me. Verse 17, one other verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. What a great promise. When Christ comes in us, he changes everything. Everything old passes away. We get to experience the newness of following and loving and serving Jesus. Today, I want to call on you to live out a courageous life. And the way that you do that is you understand that there is an absolute challenge. That's a part of this experience. There's a key verse uh, that we, there are verses in this text that you see, and as well as there's an application for our life that we can make a very clear application regarding the steps that we take for our faith journey. The challenge, first of all, the challenge is this, learning how to discover God's way to a courageous life. In other words, there's a path that God has for us that's different than any other path. It's a path that God has designed for us to experience his best in our life. Today, as we experience that, we start taking certain steps. Those steps lead us towards experiencing what he intends. Today, as you think about that, accept the challenge. Be willing to walk through these seven steps of a courageous journey and see what God has for you when you make that choice. The key verses are verses 7 and verses 17. Notice if you would, we've read them. Verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 17, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And so what do we discover? We discover that the challenge is for us to live out and these promises and let them become a part of our story. What's the application? Here's the application so essential for you and me. Paying the price is always worth it. When we are willing to do what it is God's called us to do in the way that God's called us to do it, it is always worth it. Today, I wanna to encourage you to think about your faith journey and see what it is God has in store for you can you accept the challenge? Can you believe the promises? Can you make the application? We'll see as we walk through this text, seven absolutely key steps 
to a courageous life. And God's intent for all of us is to live courageously, to experience the best of life as we courageously step into what it is that he has for us. I have a friend who is a young man who serves uh, in the Ukraine during uh, this time in, in the ministry, but he has a heart for impacting those on the front line and near the front line. And I've watched the courage that he's exhibited, never flinching at the opportunity, always seizing it. And you see what happens is when you and I look at an opportunity and we let it stay there too long, we may miss it because we may allow fear or some other doubt to steal what it is God intended. So today, I want to just walk you through seven of these that I hope will be helpful to you. First of all, in verses one through five, we learn that it's important to have the courage to persevere, to keep pushing forward, to persevere because God has something greater in store for us. Look at it if you would. For we know this earthly tent, which is our house is torn down. We have a building from God, a house not made with hand, eternal in the heavens. For indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our dwelling from heaven, inasmuch as we, having put it on, will not be found naked. For indeed, while we're in this tent, we groan, being burdened, because we do not want to be unclothed, but to be clothed, so that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. Now he who prepared us for this very purpose is God, who gave us the Spirit as a pledge. To be courageous, we have to persevere. We have to be willing to go the extra mile. We have to be willing to do what it is that God intends for each one of us. So when you start persevering, you recognize something. He's preparing us. He's preparing us for our eternal home. He wants us to understand something. This, that this earth is not our eternal home. It's only our temporal home. And God has something for us. In fact, the Bible says that as he writes here, he says that our bodies, we groan. In other words, we begin to anticipate what it is that God has in store for us. My sweet mother went to be in heaven a few months ago now. And when I think about that, I think about the groaning she was going through at the end of her journey. She longed, she longed to be perfect again, to be perfect for the first time, actually, to be able to see Jesus face to face to be experiencing what God intended for her life. You see, in life, she had gone through lots of difficulty, a lot of heartache. But out of that, when she walked into heaven, she stood straight up. She spoke effectively. She remembered everything. She understood what God had for her. But we do understand that we do groan in this earthly tent. The second thing you see, so first of all, we learn how to persevere. We understand that that's God's call for us to be courageous. Secondly, we have the courage to walk by faith. Notice if you would, verse six through eight. We read it a moment ago. Let's look at it one more time. Therefore, always being up, what? Good courage. And knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Courage, 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 courage. What is Paul saying? Keep on keeping on. Keep on believing. Keep walking by faith. Keep walking by faith because he's going to do something in store in your life as a result of that. And we know that faith is impossible to please him for he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. We seek him with the courage to know that he's going to speak to our lives in amazing way. Today, as you think about that, just stop for a second and, and recognize something. He is equipping us. He's equipping us to live effectively in anticipation of heaven. That's why when you see all the saints who've gone before us, our moms, our dads, our relatives who've loved Jesus, what do we see them also doing? Crying out to him to become the author and finisher of their faith. The one who writes the story that's most amazing. And I read a little sign that uh, actually was a gift at Christmas time, but different church signs. That, and the one I read this week was that I trust the next chapter because I know who writes the story. You and I know who writes our story. We have the courage to walk by faith. The third thing we see, you'll notice in verses 9 and 10, is the courage to please him. Look, if you would, what he says here. Therefore, we have as our ambition, whether at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. The courage to please him. What a great, great reminder to all of us. Because what happens is when we learn that he is 
ever watching over all the action of our life. We want our lives to be a reflection of something amazing, something powerful. And when we, when we commit to please him, it means he takes precedent over everyone and everything. And so what happens is he, he begins to remind us that, that our lives matter and they will be rewarded. You see, everything you do inside of his purpose will be recognized inside of his plan. God has something he wants to show us and he wants us to please him. So we persevere. We seek him and walk by faith. We, we commit ourselves to pleasing him in every action point of our lives. The fourth thing we see is this. We, we have the courage to share him. Look, if you would, verse 11. Notice what it said. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are mani made manifest to God, and I hope that we are made manifest also in your conscience. Not that we, com again, commending ourselves to you, but are giving you an occasion to be proud of us so that you will take, have an answer for those who take pride in appearance and not in heart. What is he saying to us? He's saying to us we have to have the courage to share him because some people are confused about who he is, how he works, what he's doing in our lives. When you have a courage that comes from him, you'll share with whoever it is that you encounter. He is calling us. He is calling on us to let others know he is the answer. He's calling on us to share what only God can do. Because what can take our lives and make sense of it where another person would want to experience what we experience is Christ in us, working in our lives to transform us. And it's powerful when you look at this text. We persuade because of the fear of the Lord, because we love him more than anything. Notice on, if we would, verse uh, the, the, the next one, number five. Seven steps towards experiencing what God has for it. The courage, the courage to walk in the spirit. Look, if you would, verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to flesh, even though we have known Christ according to flesh. Yet now we know him in, the way, no, in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in, is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What's he saying here? It's not our flesh at this point. We are walking in the spirit. Today, we walk in the spirit who guides us through every action point of our lives. Wouldn't it be amazing today if we just stopped and rec recognized something? We recognize he's enabling us to experience a new and living way. He's given us the capacity to be able to experience him in vivid and amazing ways. We just have to be willing to have the courage to walk in the spirit. May the spirit of the Lord speak to our hearts today. May the spirit of the Lord guide us towards encountering him in new and living ways. He is the living way. He is the life that changes ours forever. He is the light that shines on our lives. He is the God who's known us before we were ever born in our mother's womb. He is the one who's called on us to walk in the spirit, not the flesh. A sixth thing we see when it comes to the courageous journey is this. We have the courage, we must have the courage to live in Christ, to live in Christ. You'll notice he talks about that we're a new creature in verse 17. But notice, look on. Now all, verse 18, now all things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He is, re he is reconciling us. He's reconciling us as new creatures, as new creations in him. He's changed us forever. He's shaped our direction and hope. He's given us something the world could never give us. And what Paul understood was for the Corinthians, they needed to understand that he reconciles all things. In other words, he accounts for every aspect of our lives. Some of us live through difficult challenges, but through those, through those, we have the courage to continue to walk with him. Some of us live through blessed time. We have the courage to walk with him. You see, when you walk with him, it changes our lives and it changes your life just like it does mine. A final area that we look at today as we talk about how important it is to be courageous, to be strong in what it is that God has for us, is the area of, and you find it in the last couple of verses of this text, the courage to represent him. Look if you would and notice what he says here in these verses. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. He made himself who knew no sin 
to be sin on our behalf so that we might become righteousness, the righteousness of God in him. Jesus did it for us. And here's what we realize. He's positioning us in him because he represented us. He took all the sin of the world, put it on his own shoulders. What Jesus did, he had the courage to face the sin of the entire world and give us an answer that was Christ in us, the hope of glory. Today, I want to call on you to be courageous. Be bold. Watch what he does when you take that step. Will you take these seven steps with me? Will you be courageous to walk in him? Will you represent him? Will you persevere? Will you walk by faith? Will you recognize that what God has for you, he wants you to find in his spirit? If you will, this is going to be a blessed week for you. It's a blessed week for me to be able to share God's word with you. Let's pray together and let's ask the Lord to cement these seven thoughts into your heart and mind. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for the promises of your word. Thank you for the principles that have been developed into our hearts and lives as we've looked at your word. Bless us today to follow you, to serve you, to experience you, and to know that he who began a good work in us will complete it. You are faithful. Jesus is the answer for the entire world today. And we thank you for the goodness of our God. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. I hope you've been encouraged and blessed every week as we have the privilege to be able to do this. Uh, we're now entering, getting ready to enter our third year of doing this. I love it. I love preparing this message and sharing it. If you could join us for the live stream, feel free to do that on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, if not, keep being blessed by these recordings. I hope they're an encouragement to you. Certainly my honor and joy to be your pastor and friend. God bless you. Have a great week.